Hello. Today I want to talk about one of the most commonly used navigation techniques and it's also something that you already know how to do and we call it hand railing or in navigation it's called hand railing. A handrail can be anything that you can walk parallel to or that you can walk along. So as I said you already know how to do this. You may say to somebody to get to the cafe what you do is you walk up the road until you get to the shops, walk along the shops, keeping the shops on your right hand side and the cafe is at the top of the row. So in this case the two handrails would be the road because you're walking along it and the shops because you're walking parallel to them. Obviously when you're walking out in the countryside there's not many shops or roads so what we tend to do is we tend to use the features that are shown on the map. So an important part of hand railing is before you set off, have a look at your map and find the features that you're going to use. Don't just head off and hope there'll be something. So I'll drop this onto your screen now and we'll have a look at a few things that you can use as handrails. So here we are and if we have a look at this we can see there's a track through a forest. That would be a good handrail, very easy to follow. Or you can follow the edge of a wooded area or, or a large forest. Or a, a very common one is to walk down a stream or a river. Or even you can use a stone wall or a fence. Now, once you get more experience, you'll be able to use the ground features as well. As an example, you'll be able to walk along a ridge without losing any height or walk along a valley without gaining any height. You'll even be able to use contour lines so that you're walking along the countryside and not actually losing or gaining any height whatsoever. So at the end of the day, a handrail is anything that you can walk along and that's heading in the direction that you want to go to. Now, when I say you can follow man-made features like fences and walls and what have you, bear in mind that some man-made features do move. Fences are replaced quite often. Um, forestry plantations, they cut down regularly. Where a mountain may be covered in a forest one day and two weeks later it's just a bare mountain. So bear that in mind. Um, these things, in this area we have dry stone walls. Some of them have been here for 500 years and they're not going anywhere. But do bear in mind that any man-made feature may or may not be there so have a quick check on that. Now I'm assuming that you've watched the other videos in this introductory series so if you haven't you should watch them in order because on this particular thing that we're doing now which is hand railing we always include the collecting and catching features so if you haven't watched that video please go and watch that be before you continue watching this. Now I'll give you a real world example of how we handrail. So let, let's go through this. Before we start with this real world example, it's if you're not used to looking at British Ordnance Survey maps, it's important to recognise that the green dotted line indicates a public right of way or a footpath and a thin black line represents a wall or a fence. Now where a public right of way intersects or goes over a wall or a fence there's invariably a stile or a gate or some other method of getting over the wall or fence. So I can see where I am on the map and I can confirm that using my orientated map. If you haven't watched that video in this series of orientating your map just have a quick look at that before you carry on. Now I know where I am on the map so I know where I am and I know where I want to walk to. I'll drop this onto your screen just so you know what I'm talking about. So I'm here where the black arrow is indicating on your screen and I want to walk to this junction of the footpath and the wall which is shown on your screen. Now in the, normally what I do is I just orientate my map and this would show me the direction of the junction and I just walked straight across the uh, countryside until I arrived you know, at the um, track and wall junction. Or I could just walk straight down the field until I hit the track and then turn left. But if the weather's bad or it's night time or you know, it would be better to use handrails. Now don't forget I'm doing this as an introductory video so normally it wouldn't be this detailed. Hand railing is really simple but hopefully everybody understands why I'm doing it like this. So I've decided to handrail this and so I'm going to walk parallel to this wall 
and this should bring me to my first collecting feature which is where I meet another wall at right angles and I'll turn right and follow this down to my next collecting feature which on the map is shown as some sort of crags but in this area it's almost certainly limestone pavement once I've gone past my second collecting feature just after this the junction of the path and the wall should be just a short way down now if I miss for any reason if I miss the uh, the junction the gate or the style or whatever it is then I've got a catching feature um, which is a wall or a fence that runs along the edge of Ingscar Crag so if I get to that one if I get to the Ingscar Crag wall or fence whatever it is then all I need to do is turn around and walk back up the same wall um, and that should hopefully get me to the gate and <laughs> in broad daylight this would be really really simple so just to make it a bit more interesting I think I'll do this at night time when it's really really dark so this is it this is our hand railing exercise for this evening I'm I've looked at the map quite a few times and I'm confident that I remember the handrails and also I'm confident that I also remember my collecting and catching features so I'll be following this wall keeping it on my left and um, looking for my first collecting feature that should be in that direction and here it is this is my first collecting feature this is the wall that was shown on the map and if you remember it's supposed to cut in front of me at right angles and go off to my right which it does so I'll continue down the wall hand railing it uh, onwards to my second collecting feature and here it is this is the start of the limestone pavement so I'm going to continue walking down in front of me. I'm going to con also going to continue hand railing this wall. So this one here. Um, and then hopefully in a short distance, I should come across a gate or a style or some method of getting over this wall. So I'll continue on and uh, let's see what happens. And here it is. This is it. This is the gate. So it's a tiny little thing. So what we've done is just by using hand railing and ticking off our collecting features as we uh, found them, all we've done is we walked in the, uh, the middle of the night. There are no lights out here in the countryside and we found a tiny little gate in a wall. So this is why hand railing is one of the most common navigation techniques because it's very simple and providing you stick to the rules of using catching and collecting features then it's almost infallible so <laughs> well done to us we found it just one final point about following handrails this wall goes down towards the watlows i'll put it onto your screen so you know which one i'm talking about it's this wall here indicated by the uh, black line now this wall heads off down to the Watlows, so you may want to follow it. You want to turn right at the bottom of the wall and go off to the top of the, to Malham Cove, to, I don't know why, to see the Harry Potter filming location. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but bear in mind you do need to look at your map and see where your handrails, you know, where they're going. This particular wall drops over a quite steep drop just before it arrives at the Watlows. Now let's go and have a look at it. So here we are down in the Watlows, and you can see the fence at the top of the crag there. That is the end of the, the wall. They've, they've changed it into uh, the last bit into a fence because it's too steep for a dry stone wall. So the thing is, in the daytime, you probably could scramble down that, you know, really carefully. You'd, you'd be okay. Um, could you do it at night? Before you answer, let's see what it actually looks like in the dark. And this is what it looks like in the dark. But with the benefits of some uh, modern technology, let's shed some light on the situation. So 
So what do you think? Do you think it'd be a good idea to attempt to come down that slope in the dark? I'm not sure. <laughs> My personal idea is there's always more simpler routes, easier, safer and more enjoyable routes. So why take the risk? Back to hand railing. Just as a quick recap, a handrail is any linear route that you can walk on or walk parallel to. So it could be a track through a forest, it could be the edge of a forest or a dry stone wall or a river or anything. As long as it's going in the right direction and you can follow it, that's a handrail. So I hope you've got a better understanding of what handrails are now. So thanks for watching.